to today's program. I am Pallavi Gagoy of KK Handik State Open University. In today's program, I shall discuss with you the importance of comprehension. Here is the layout of the contents of this presentation. The objectives, comprehension, the purpose of comprehension, reading practice, intelligent reading, comprehension for exam purpose, answering unseen passage, comprehension for general purpose, and practice and perfection. The objectives are designed as follows. The design program will enable the learner to learn the importance of comprehension, gain an idea of intelligent reading, grasp the difference between skimming and scanning, comprehend how to tackle unseen passages with relative ease, apply the suggested point of discussion in your exercise or practice of comprehension, answer unseen passages keeping in mind the points of discussion in examination, and basically to develop an interest and enjoy the mental exercise of comprehension. What is comprehension? The mental exercise of comprehension may either tickle and excite your brain cells, it may be exciting exercise for you, or it may simply leave you head scratching and totally jumbled. So comprehension is not as scary as it seems. It can be an enjoyable exercise. Reading and grasping knowledge from any form of reading materials, be it news reports, editorials, magazine, or journal articles, uh, books or even fiction narratives, prose texts and various other forms of writing can be an enjoyable experience. But for many, reading itself is an ordeal. So the trick of cracking any form of new and unseen passage lies in practice. The simple answer lies in practice itself. Once you master it through practice, it can lead you to discover new ideas, information and knowledge. What is the purpose of comprehension? You may be wondering. Why comprehension is needed at all? It is very important in a, even in our day-to-day -day lives or even for our regular examinations. The skills of comprehension are important both for an examination and for regular reading purposes. In an exam, the purpose of comprehension in an examination is to test the candidate's ability to read and grasp uh, meaning, to scan and select information, and most importantly, to answer and express the content in his or her own words in how he or she makes sense of a particular comprehensive uh, passage uh, within a stipulated time, within a limited time. The answers to the given set of questions uh, of an unseen passage provide the examiner an idea of the candidate's comprehension skills. So this is an evaluative process. It measures at once the cognitive abilities of the candidate, that is the mental thinking capabilities and thinking and grasping capabilities of a student. For regular reading, comprehension is an important skill by way of which one has the access to wider knowledge and information. Practice of reading. So, why is it important? Now you know. So what happens when you turn the leaf of your question paper in an examination and find that the unseen passage is staring back at you? You just don't know how to react, you just don't know what to do. But if you have practiced well, you will not lose your composure and instead busy yourself in reading and making sense of it. You will then try to extract the essence of the passage and, mind you, when you do this, a part of your work is done. And then you'll go on to focus on the details of the text and accordingly answer the set of questions that are given at the end of the comprehension, uh, comprehension passage. But if you lack good practice, what happens is that you may be unsure of attempting you know, a comprehension portion or passage. You may lose a good deal of time head scratching in the examination and you may also run the risk of misinterpreting in your hurry, which is why you require good practice and hence the answer for you is intelligent reading. Now you may think it's easier said than done, but practice is the only way to develop your skills. So pay attention. Intelligent reading is very important. One's first reading of an unseen passage is bound to be incomplete. Okay? Nobody knows of what the unseen passage uh, will contain or how much layered will it be with meaning, information, data, etc. Uh, but therein lies the challenge. So it is bound to be incomplete as it tends to provide a vague idea of its entire content. In your quick uh, second or third rereading, you generally start to grasp the essential information and highlights of the text, you know, the keywords, etc. And then you make a mental note of the keywords and the main points, and then you read the given set of questions and answer, try to answer them. The point to remember is that it is incorrect to think that 
reading a passage of number of times, two, three times over, is a waste of time. No, it is not. In fact, it is investment because you understand the passage better and then you go on to answer the questions instead of rushing in a hurry, read it just, you know, just about uh, vaguely reading something and trying to uh, somehow just get rid of uh, these questions by answering them, you know, in a few words. What happens when the time is limited? You don't have all the time in the world to just read that particular comprehensive passages. You have so many questions to develop, which is why you require practice of skimming and scanning. Okay. Now you may be wondering what these two terms are. When you practice it yourself, you will understand it better. Skimming is a way of quick reading okay, through a passage to receive an overview uh, or a gist of the content and the type of questions that have been asked. This provides a vague idea of say an almost 55% of the passage that one skims through. After having skimmed through, the next thing to do is to scan the content. Now if you have had a quick reading, now you, you will move on to scanning. Scanning is a way of detailed reading which requires one to focus on the details of the contents. That is for example the keywords, the central controlling ideas, the expository sentences, the highlights, the figures or factual details. All right? This will enable one to form a broad view of the content so you get a better idea of the passage and then you can move on into you know answering these questions better because you have a mental uh, picture you have already formulated a mental picture or uh, you have made a map of meaning unconsciously in your mind all right so while the examination clock is ticking all it requires is concentration and tact to crack open an unseen passage generally uh, it is seen that students prefer or learners prefer to attempt comprehension passages at the end. It is alright to do so, but it is always good to have a, a good practice um, before your exam so that within that stipulated point of time you can read, reread, skim, scan and then uh, go on to answering the questions uh, without making the mistakes of misinterpretation. So comprehension for examination purpose. Read a given passage or extract quickly in order to receive a vague idea of the content. Reread the passage with a careful attention to details along with the questions. As you reread, your mind will simultaneously, when you practice, it will happen naturally. Okay, which is, you just have to keep this in mind. Uh, simultaneously, it will be, be at work to figure out the core idea. What is the core idea of that particular um, passage that you have in front of you? Scan through the passage for important ideas, informations, details and any tidbits. All right. Make mental notes. If sometimes, uh, or most of the times, in fact, students or learners are not allowed to mark their question papers. So what you do is you can always make a mental preparation, mental note of uh, you know the probable answers in the given set of questions, or frame your answers mentally, basically. If the questions follow the sequence of paragraphs serially, mentally organize your answers, okay? Mentally organize your answers. Because sometimes it's seen that the paragraphs, uh, according the questions follow the pattern of paragraphs, you know, in a serial, a serial way. The answers are just there. You just have to uh, follow them. Uh, but mind you, this is not always. This um, only in in a general context that I'm talking about. Sometimes it's all haphazard and questions just, uh, uh, you know, uh, are in a random order also. Write your answers in your own words, alright? This is very important because you cannot or you should not, in fact, in alter the content of the passage if there is any opinion of the author, okay, stated in the particular comprehensive passage. So do not provide your opinion unless the question requires you to, okay? You don't have to just rush into, say, uh, you know, writing what you think of it. You have to write what you have received in the particular passage. That's all, okay? That's all there, uh, that, uh, there is to it, all right? So check if you have misread or misinterpreted any portion of the passage so that you know don't, you don't lose out on those marks. And seeing unseen passages, all the clues that you require uh, are there in the passage itself. It's not there. Everything that you need, your answers are already there. You just have to formulate them. You have to be just intelligent to pick them up and you know put them own words. All right. So um, you have to just judiciously cut out. That is, you have to take out the main points. You have to cut out the main points and you have to arrange it in your own way of expression. So questions follow a pattern in which each question correspond to the paragraphs or serially discuss ideas of a given passage. Like I said, the uh, questions generally tend to follow the particular sequence of the paragraphs. This is uh, generally, all right? Analytical questions test if you can reflect uh, your understanding of a problem, okay? Issue or an idea in a gist, that is, where you can analyze the particular comprehensive passage where you can reflect it uh, through your own writing, okay? Uh, in short, that is. 
in a gist nobody wants you to elaborate it you just have to uh, show that uh, you just have to uh, be able to grasp it and show your uh, critical thinking skills uh, answer to the point okay this is very important because you you only have to answer what has been questioned and nothing more or nothing less all right make sure that answers do not overlap because sometimes it happens that without reading the question questions you're just reading question one and you're finding the answer and then reading the question two this is not what is done what you have to do what you have to do is you have to kind of answer it in a very systematic process by which you have to first read the questions and so that you can formulate okay first you have to just uh, go through all the questions so that you are sure that you do not overlap your answers okay while you correspond to the particular uh, passages provide clear cut answers which answers the question to the point a well written answer is both concise and precise okay in simple language and correct grammar which is very important you cannot be writing all kinds of uh, you know haphazard kind of things it has to be proper simple language but has to be proper in proper grammar you may rephrase your answers instead of blindly copying them okay uh, this is very important you have to write it in your own words without first altering the content of the passage or the writer's opinion if any and also you have to Mm, write them in your own words all right but while you write in your own words keep in mind not to alter the author's idea or provide your own subjective opinions comprehension for general purpose for general reading purposes you can select any extract from a newspaper novel magazine journal encyclopedia or any other text source okay any you may just pick any form of reading material be it in print or on the web you can take your laptop and you can just you know surf the net and try to uh, you know access uh, such kind of text sources so that you can practice your comprehension skills and quickly read or browse through the material reread and scan it uh, select passages for smaller details jot down the core ideas or central theme of the content and mark or highlight certain keywords that act as clues to the central theme consult a dictionary if you find certain keywords difficult which you obviously will okay uh, so form questions you should form self questions or you should get somebody else to practice comprehension with you to read the same passage and you know formulate self questions and ask each other and try to see how you both evaluate or how you both uh, critically analyze a particular comprehension passage this will really help you so you can also jot down a set of questions uh, because uh, you, since this is just, just for your practice you can uh, after reading a particular comprehension uh, passage you can jot down your set of questions and you can try to answer them mentally Okay, or you can even do read writing practice. You can just write them down. Uh, attempt to answer these questions in your own words, but okay. In case you are asked to provide a heading, write a suitable one in keeping with the core idea, theme, event, or character, as the case may be. Start from the easier text that which interests you, because then you will find it more interesting. Suppose you just end up taking, uh, you know, difficult text from say uh, the web or from some kind of a, you know, difficult book. Uh, you will find it very challenging. So start from simpler, uh, simpler, uh, simpler comprehension passages, or uh, extract simpler, you know, uh, comprehensive passages for your own, um, you know, uh, de development. So that you can gradually uh, start from the simpler texts to the uh, more critical ones. Right. So you can also. Um, uh, time yourself okay because um, this is what is important within a stipulated time doing comprehension or um, you know making sense of something uh, is the skill that uh, will always uh, stand in good stead for you all right so you may time yourself and try to ask someone like i said you who will be able to explain the meaning and context of the passage or you will be able to show you if you have misinterpreted something check how much you can you know comprehend uh, within a particular time and how correctly you can comprehend okay this you can do with uh, a person uh, who is interested in comprehension or your friend or anyone who can help you out practice and perfection these are the keywords perfection will come only when you practice okay so therefore, it is important to inculcate a good habit of regular reading, comprehension and also writing is equally important. So comprehension not only helps in reading and grasping, but also in expressing and articulating. Both intelligent reading and writing go hand in hand. Suppose you know how to read and grasp intelligently, but cannot reflect it through your writing. The purpose is defeated. So both are equally important. Therefore, comprehension requires a good deal of intelligent reading practice, a good deal of focus or concentration, an eye for details and a knack for the correct expression in words.
So, dear learners, we come to the end of today's program. I wish you all the best. I hope you develop your reading and writing and comprehension skills in a big way so that you benefit um, in your day-to-day -day life, whether you are there sitting for an examination or whether you are just reading for pleasure or whether you are teaching someone or whether you are just grappling with um, new uh, strands of knowledge, thought and reflecting on various kind of ideas. Thank you. With this we come to today's program. Thank you, dear learner.